Okay, we are going to cover chapter six of conceptual physics, uh, momentum. And uh, let's get started. Uh, I'm going to dismiss my image here. Uh, this lecture will help you understand momentum, impulse, impulse changes momentum, bouncing, conservation of momentum, collisions, and more complicated collisions. Uh, so let's get right into it. Let's, uh, Okay, momentum is a property of moving things. It means um, inertia in motion. Uh, more specifically, a mass of an object multiplied by its velocity. In equation form, momentum equals mass times velocity. Um, now, if you can recall my little uh, discussion about being at a uh, shopping center and seeing a, a, uh, a empty shopping basket headed towards your new car, uh, you would most likely get in front of it and to stop it from hitting your new car because it, it has some momentum, but it doesn't have that much. You can stop a an empty moving uh, cart pretty easily. And, but I also gave the analogy if it were a bread truck, you know, because it has much more inertia, uh, you wouldn't step in front of it. Well, it's the same thing. If, if, it, if it has... Um, if it's moving, that that inertia times the velocity gives it momentum. So the bread truck coming towards your new car has a lot more momentum, and you wouldn't step in front of it. You might step in front of it if it's an empty shopping cart, but not if it's a, uh, a bread truck. Uh, so momentum equals mass times velocity. Um, if there's is velocity is zero. Mass times zero is zero, so the momentum is zero. So it's a, a inertia in motion. Um, so there has to be an motion in order for there to be moment, momentum. Um, okay, let's... Uh, uh, example, a moving boulder has more momentum than a stone rolling at the same speed. A fast boulder has more momentum than a slow boulder with the same mass. Uh, a boulder at rest has no momentum. So zero velocity at rest means uh, no momentum. So there has to be some speed or some velocity for there to be momentum. Okay. A moving object has momentum, energy, speed, all of the above. Well, it's D. It has all of the above. It does have momentum. Um it does have energy. We haven't covered energy yet, but we'll see that uh, whereas momentum is mass times velocity, uh, can, we'll learn that kinetic energy is one half times the mass times velocity squared. Um, but we're not there yet. Okay. When the speed of an object is doubled, its momentum, well, it's momentum is equal to the mass times the velocity or speed. So if the speed is doubled, it's directly proportional, so it the it's going to be doubled. The momentum is going to be doubled. Okay. Now, impulse. Impulse is the product of force and time. Force times time. In equation form, impulse equals Ft, the force times the time. Um, so a brief, a brief force applied over a short time interval it produces a small change in momentum. Uh, then the same force applied over a longer time interval. Or if you push with the same force for twice the time, you impart twice the impulse and produce twice the change in momentum. Okay. The greater the impulse exerted on something, the greater the change in momentum. Um, in equation form, Ft, that's impulse, force times time equals delta. Delta means a change, a change in the momentum. So... If you apply more force, you're going to increase the momentum. If you apply the same force for a longer period of time, you're going to impart more momentum. Um, okay, when the force that produces an impulse acts for twice as much time, the impulse is well. If you look at the look at the equation, it's force times time. There's no square term. There's no denominator. So if you increase the time. If you double the time, you're going to double the change in momentum. And that's the answer, doubled. Okay. Um, increasing momentum. 
Uh, increasing the time of contact results in a greater change in momentum. Force can vary throughout the duration of the contact. Uh, you, if we were to graph it, it may start off slow. The force may start off slow, but then uh, get to a real high peak at the center and then taper off. Uh, so the force can vary during the, the uh, throughout the duration of contact. Um, a golfer swings a club and follows through. A baseball player hits a ball and follows through. Uh, both of those are examples. Okay. A cannonball shot from a cannon with a long barrel will emerge with greater speed because the cannonball receives a greater what, average force, an impulse, both of the above, none of the above. Well, if the barrel is longer, then it's going gonna, it's gonna to have that compressive gas force for a longer period of time. So it's going to be a larger impulse. Uh, the average force on the cannonball will be the same for a short or long barreled um, cannon. The longer the, bar the longer barrel provides a longer time for the force to act and therefore a greater impulse. The long barrel also provides a longer distance for the force to act, providing greater work and kinetic energy of the cannonball. Okay, decreasing momentum over a long time. Allowing longer time to reduce momentum requires a smaller average force to impart the same negative impulse. Uh, a, pa a fast moving car hitting a haystack or hitting a cement wall produces vastly different results. Um, do both experience the same change in momentum? Momentum is equal to uh, mass times um, mass times velocity. Uh, impulse is equal to force times time. So uh, do both experience the same impulse and do both experience the same force? So it's one and two are the ones that that are yes um and number three the force can vary um so yes one and two they experience the same change of momentum and they experience the same impulse uh, they don't experience the same force the change of momentum is the same and we'll show examples of that in a bit the change of momentum is the same in both cases, but the haystack increases the stopping time, therefore utilizing a much smaller force to achieve the same impulse. Um, when a dish falls, will the change in momentum be less if it lands on a carpet than if it lands on a hard floor? Okay, will the change of momentum be less? The change in momentum, um, is the the difference in the velocity is going to be the, from the initial velocity to zero, and the mass is going to stay the same. So they're uh, they're both the same. Now, if it lands on a carpet, it's going to reduce the force. Um, so let's look at this. No, both are the same. The change in momentum is the same. The same em initial momentum is reduced to zero in both cases. Thus, the change in momentum and therefore the impulse is the same in both cases. The average force is less with the carpet than with the floor because soft carpet allows a longer time for the dish to come to rest. Okay, example, when a car is out of control, it is better to hit a haystack than a concrete wall. Um, the same impulse either way, but extension of hitting time reduces the force. So look at, you can see this is mass times a large velocity and you get uh, a small force over a longer time. Whereas here, you have the same mass times the velocity hitting a wall, a large force, but a small time. And we can see some applications of this. Um, that's, here's a concrete barrier. And what do they put in front of the concrete barrier? This is an exit ramp over there off of Loop 410. You can see the Dave & Buster's uh, there at the... Uh, Wonderland of the Americas. Um, if you were to lose control, would you want to hit this concrete barrier head on? No. It, it, these barrels are put there 
to increase the time it takes to come to a complete stop. That's one form of, of these uh, barricade protectors. Here's another form. I'm going to call it a, an accordion type. I don't know if that's really the what they're called, but but uh, here's a concrete a concrete wall. If you were to hit that at a high rate of speed, it would, damage would be significant. But if you hit this metal, uh, almost hollow uh, grid, that'll slow you down for a longer period of time and reduce the force. Um, and that's what, uh, that's why your the insides of your, your car, the dashboard is padded. Now you should have a seat belt and you should have airbags, but if for some reason, um, you weren't wearing those, you wouldn't want to hit a metal, um, dashboard. You'd want to hit one that had a cushion on it. And that's why they, they have these cushions on the, um, they have a foam pad on the, on the uh, dashboard. My father-in-law used to let me drive his 1961 uh, uh, Lancer, um, Dodge Lancer, and, and it had a metal, it was so old, it, it had a metal uh, uh, dashboard. I can remember turning on the, the radio of that old car and I thought, oh no, it doesn't work. You know, so I just turned it off. And I, I tried a couple more times and finally I left it on. And after about 30 seconds, the radio came on. It had tubes. It, had, it was a tube radio. The tubes needed to warm up in order for the uh, the sound to come on. That's how old that, uh, that automobile was. Okay, let's get back here. Uh, more examples. When landing after a jump, gradually bending your knees increases the time your momentum decreases, reducing the force exerted on you by the ground. If you were to land stiff need with your legs straight it would probably hurt your knees and other parts of your body um in boxing you ride with the punch you can you, you can see this boxer here is kind of moving backwards and you wouldn't want to move into the the punch you can see a small f with a, a large t the increase in time here when he's moving into the punch it's a large force and a small in a small time. So the change in momentum is the same, but the force is reduced if you can lengthen the time. Okay. Um, decreasing momentum over a short time. A short time interval produces a large force. Uh, a karate expert splits a stack of bricks by bringing her arm and hands swiftly against the bricks with a considerable momentum. The time of contact is brief, and the force of impact is huge. So if you do it quickly, you imparting an impulse, but in a very short period of time, um, that gives a, a, a large force. Okay. Impulses are generally greater when objects bounce. If you could, if you could, uh, uh, if you had a little rubber, if you had a, a, a dart, that you aimed at a block um, and the the dart were to stick to the um, to the block where it's embedded in the block, that's um, uh, the impulse is actually less as if it were to bounce. If you had like a rubber tip dot, dart and hit it and it bounced off, um, you the uh, impulse would be greater. Uh, so Catching a f falling flower pot from a shelf with your hands, uh, you provide the impulse to reduce its momentum to zero. If you throw the flower pot up again, you provide an additional impulse. This is double impulse. This double impulse occurs when something bounces. Um, let's take a bouncing ball when it when it ricochets off the floor. It, let, let's say it were a, a ball of clay. Uh, well, you have the the MV, the mass times the velocity, the change in velocity is from, let's say it's uh, two meters per second to zero meters per second. Let's say it's a one kilogram ball of clay. Um, the You would get a particular impulse. Uh, I forgot what I said. Uh, let's say two meters per second, one kilogram times two meters per second. 
uh, the change in velocity when it goes to zero would be uh, two kilogram meters per second. Now, let's say if it were to bounce, bounce. let's just say, say that it bounces with the same velocity. You have uh, the mass, one kilogram times the uh, two meters per second. Now, minus a minus two meters per second going in the upward direction. Now you've got a four kilogram meters per second. So it's greater when there's a bounce as opposed to when it just stops. Okay, the Pelton wheel is designed to bounce water when it makes a U-turn on impact with a curved paddle. So as opposed to just catching it, the, these buckets are made for it to, to bounce and impart more impulse. Okay, the law of conservation of momentum. Momentum is always conserved. Uh, in the absence of an external force, the momentum of a system remains unchanged. So you have a cannon, uh, the mass of a cannon and the mass of the cannonball. Initially, you have MV plus MV. So what is V? If it's initially at rest, it's zero. So your initial momentum is zero. When you fire the cannon, the cannonball is ejected out in one direction, and the cannon has a recoil in the opposite direction. So you have the m times the velocity of the cannonball is one momentum. Well, guess what? It'll be canceled out by the recoil because it'll be an m times a minus velocity in the opposite direction. So your total momentum will still be zero. All right. Uh, when a cannon is fired, the force on the cannonball inside the cannon barrel is equal and opposite to the force of the cannonball on the cannon. The cannonball gains momentum while the cannon gains an equal amount of momentum in the opposite direction. The cannon recoils. When no external force is present on a system, no external pulse is present and no change in the net momentum of the system is possible. You certainly get a change in momentum in the cannon and you get a change in momentum in the cannonball. But if you look at it as a system, they cancel out one another. Okay. Uh, intermolecular forces within a baseball come in pairs, uh, canceling one another out, providing zero net impulse and therefore no effect on the momentum of the ball. Those little molecules and atoms inside the baseball are always moving. Um, but there's a net, net zero change in momentum. Pushing against the car's dashboard while seated in the car has no effect on its momentum because the dashboard pushes back on the pusher with, the, with an opposing force. So there's no net external force on the car. All right. Now, for collisions, in the absence of external forces, the net momentum before collisions equals the net momentum after collisions. It's the kind of the opposite of the cannon and cannonball, the, it, it's zero momentum beforehand. You fire the cannon, you got a net zero momentum momentum afterwards. So in equation form, net mv before equals net mv after. The total momentum before equals the total momentum afterwards, and that's true of collisions too. Elastic collisions. There's going to be. Elastic and inelastic collisions, and I'm going to do a little demonstration of that in a little bit. Elastic collisions occur when colliding objects rebound without lasting deformation or any generation of heat. Think of billiard balls. If you strike a, a cue ball at an object ball, um, the, once they collide, the object ball which will remain stationary and the object ball will will move with it with that same velocity. Uh, so you, you can see it in A, the, um, it's coming, this ball is coming over here, they collide, this green one stays and the other one takes off. Now, here they're both, they're moving in the opposite direction. So they collide and they bounce off each other going in at the same velocities. Um, here you can see one is faster then the slower one, we'll do that little demonstration in a bit. 
when they collide, the green one is takes on the slower velocity. See this one here? And the yellow one takes on the higher velocity. That's assuming that these objects are of the same mass. Okay, inelastic collisions occurs. Inelastic collisions occurs when the colliding objects res result in deformation and or the generation of heat. Um, so if this velocity is 10, and this is zero, when they um, uh, when they connect, there's going to be a uh, um, there's going to be a change in their momentum, but the total momentum is going to be the same. Uh, and so examples of elastic collisions: a single car moving at 10 meters per second collides with another car of the same mass. Um, at rest from the conservation of momentum the net before has to equal the net after so 10 meters per second uh, mass times 10 meters per mass times 10 meters per second is equal to two mass uh, twice the mass uh, times the velocity so the velocity afterwards is equal to five meters per second um let's let's do uh, some examples here i'm going to do a new share of walter fent we've done walter fent in the past we did it with the uh vectors um so here we've got um a cart but we've got uh they're both a uh, half a kilogram 0.5 kilograms the blue one is stationary and the red one, which is off the screen right now, off the screen right now, is at 0.2 meters per second. And I think they, um, you can let's skip over here to um, total momentum before is 0.1 kilogram meters per second, and total momentum afterwards is 0.1 kilogram meters per second. We won't click on the kinetic energy. We'll do that another time. Let's hit the start. And you'll see this will come over. This is a, an elastic collision. Um, and it, just like the billiard ball, once it hits, it uh, it transfers its energy to the to the other. Now let's reset it and let's make it an inelastic collision. Let's look at the total momentum. Uh, 0.1 kilogram meters per second. Well, here it's 0.1 kilogram meters per second. You've got conservation of momentum but now let's look at the uh uh let's see what i want to let's look at the velocity um you can see here the initial is two meters 0.2 meters per second this is zero afterwards it's 0.1 and 0.1 so let's go back to the momentum and hit start so it comes in at a certain rate and then boom it hits and they both go at half half the uh the velocity okay now you can do we can we can play with this and i'm going to provide you this link uh you can see it up here walterfent.de html um you want the physics english p-h-e-n and then you, that'll give you a table of contents that you can click from but you want collision underscore en dot htm uh we can do we can play with this we can make uh uh well, let's make this one double. Let's make the blue one. Oh, we have to reset it. Uh, one, and let's make it uh, elastic again. And start. Boom. The last time, the red one stayed put, uh, and the blue one took off. But this time, because the blue one was much larger, it bounced back. Okay, so there, there's some examples of some collisions. Um, let's get back to the uh, PowerPoint. And let me see if I can find that. Where, here it is. Okay. A freight car A is moving toward identical freight car B that is at rest. When they collide, both freight cars coupled together compared with the initial speed of 
freight car A, the speed of the coupled freight car, is, well, we just looked at that. If they're both identical, if they both have the same mass, then it's going to be half. Oops. And it is half. After the collision, the mass of the moving freight cars has doubled since the momentum is the product of the mass and speed. The speed must be halved to conserve the value of that product. Okay. Sometimes the colliding objects are not moving in the same straight line. These are more complicated collisions. In this case, case you create a parallelogram of the vectors describing each initial momentum to find the combined momentum. Uh, so the collision of two cars at a corner, um, momentum of car A plus momentum of car B gives you a combination. Of, we're back to vectors. Vectors are not something we're going to just suddenly forget about. Uh, you know, you cover them and you forget about them. No, that's not the case in physics. We're going to keep using vectors over and over. Okay, so you have a, a vector addition of these two um, vehicles in this collision. Okay, another example, a firecracker exploding. The vector sum of the momenta of the pieces after the explosion is equal to the initial momentum of the firecracker before it explodes. So all those individual pieces are exploding and they're going in in directions to where they, um, it maintains the same momentum. Uh, the, the total momentum remains the same. Okay, and that's it for uh, um, for this for this uh, lecture, and that'll do it.